welcome to 10 Rep Studio. In this video, I wanted to talk about a process of working on landscapes while using other artists' masterpieces as our inspiration for color palette. The artist I used for inspiration was Vincent van Gogh. I was working on a class that's called Learn to Paint Like Van Gogh that I now published on my website, kseniaanis.com. I will leave you the link to it in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested. I started by making a copy of one of his landscapes. I painted cypress in a wheat field to better understand the color palette and just his general approach, the brush strokes, how he painted the sky, how he painted the trees and the foliage. Then I tried to apply the same approach to my own photo. I painted this pine tree. You see, I did something similar in the sky, even though the colors are pretty close to nature. After I better understood how Bingo thought, I thought I could do something even more dramatic. I picked a more colorful landscape with a lot brighter colors, the one you see on the screen right now, and I painted this piece. In this video, I want to explain the process of how I worked, what I was thinking while I was working, so that you can maybe try the same thing and use your favorite masterpiece as inspiration for your artwork, not necessarily from Van Gogh, but from any artist that you admire. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be painting with my Himi gouache set. I love it because it's ready to go. I don't have to squeeze colors out of the tubes. I'm just going to give them a little spritz of water to thin them out a little bit and I can start drawing my tree. I'm using a sheet of canvas paper. You're not supposed to paint gouache on a canvas, but this is not real canvas. This is just kind of sealed canvas textured paper, so I thought it will be good. It's a little thin, but I can always laminate this painting on a piece of cardboard if it turns out good. So looking at my inspiration photo, I see that Vingo reversed the temperature of colors in that landscape. Normally I would paint warm trees and cool skies and the ground and he painted cool trees, they're blue, with yellow sky and orange ground. So let's expand our horizons so to say and try something like this. First, I'm going to distribute all the colors very roughly. I just need to cover the white of the page. This stage is probably the longest with opaque mediums. A lot of brush washing, a lot of switching of colors. It's also interesting how he actually, if we look at the branches on the trees, if you look at this painting a little bit larger, it's easy to find online. It's called Pollard Willows and Setting Sun. The trees are cool, but the tips of the branches are orange and red. I guess that setting sun was reflecting in them and gave them that warm glow. So that's one of the many interesting things I noticed about this painting. Vingo has very expressive sun in the sky. I don't see the sun in my photo, so I'm just going to omit it and just use the colors that he used. And the ground is getting warmer towards us. Uh, Van Gogh used the um, reds and kind of maroons, so I'll warm up mine as well. And the tree is going to be that royal blue color with some darker shadows that I will paint in just a minute. I'm also following Van Gogh's example in simplifying form. I have a lot of trees in the photo on the left hand side and very spindly kind of thin ones on the right, but I'm going to balance them a little bit better, maybe paint fewer ones on the left and invent some on the right because I want the painting obviously to be balanced and pleasing to the eye. So a little artistic license will come in handy, I think, in this, in this case. I also want to connect those trees to the edges of my paper. Vingo kind of threaded that blue through the grasses and there is also a strong blue line on the horizon, so I will attempt to do something similar. Okay, I got my trees figured out. I also want to add more texture to the foreground. Foreground in landscapes is always more detailed and has more contrast than the background. And I see very strong texture in Van Gogh's painting that I love, so I will try to do something similar. 
I don't have grasses, but I do have a lot of leaves on the ground that create that um, kind of patchy pattern. So I am going to paint that with a smaller brush. It actually can be, I guess, it's not grasses, but just in branches and bushes. So I will paint that as well. And I want to start adding some darks to my painting. Van Gogh's painting basically doesn't have any foliage. The trees are bare. I guess it's um, winter or early spring maybe. But I do have leaves, so I need to figure out how to paint the leaves. I think I'll use that cool green color that I see in his um, painting. Let's continue working on the foliage. I will paint the leaves that are in light with lighter green. That foliage is very transparent, it's very light. I took the photo in April, so the leaves are not fully grown, and I want to preserve that kind of lacy effect, that um, that lightness. But at the same time, I want them to make sense visually, so I'm trying to group them into larger forms, but preserving some holes in them, leaving some breathing room inside of those forms. College will also create some horizontal lines in my painting, similar to those three lines that he has in his painting, the blue line of the horizon and a couple on the ground, and that will connect those vertical trees to the left and right edge of my paper. I need to work on the foreground a little more. I want more contrast, more intensity, so I'm using a larger brush. Also need to balance it, the right hand side was a little too pale. And I think it's time to add the darks. The tree trunk looks very dark because I kind of took a photo against the light, but I can see a little bit of a shadow there. I'm just going to intensify it and increase that contrast considerably. I'm using very dark blue from my set. That one of my favorite colors actually in that Himi set. It kind of works for a lot of purposes. I use it instead of black. Black is too warm. So let's imitate Van Gogh's expressive brush strokes and paint the shadows on the tree trunks. I don't know about you, but I would have never thought about this color palette and of switching the temperature, painting the trees cooler and the sky warmer if Vingo didn't give me that idea. So it was a really interesting experiment for me. And you can let me know in comments what you think about this color palette. I know it's pretty psychedelic, but I love bright colors. So let me know what you think of the result. You will see the painting in a better light with uh, color correction and just a second. I'm almost done here. As the last step of my painting, I added a lot more foliage. I verified the branch shapes with the background. I corrected them negatively and of course everything was just a little bit too dark. In Van Gogh's painting that sun is a lot lighter and there are also some lighter stalks of grass. You see it in the center slightly a little bit to the right hand side. So I needed to do something similar and support my focal point, the tree, a little bit better with lighter color. So I'm using lemon yellow to lighten the park path and the area behind the tree, kind of between the tree trunks. And I think that made all the difference in the painting. I'm increasing also the contrast in the foreground, adding some lighter brush strokes. I think even white in some spots will be good to accentuate that focal point, those trees even more, increase the contrast around them. It's the beauty of opaque medium. We can always lighten certain areas if we need to very easily and balance our tonal relationships. And this painting is done. Here is what the photo looked like and here is what I painted inspired by Van Gogh's color palette. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!